Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We're glad that you have chosen to worship with us. Our contemporary worship, one of our five weekly services, will begin in a few moments. Good morning. You guys are in for a treat today, but you're going to have to put your whole selves into celebrating this Holy Trinity Sunday. So with that said, let's get up on our feet. All right. Welcome one and all to worship this day that the Lord has made. Listen, can you hear the wind? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Look, can you see the dancing flames? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Can you Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Do you see the visions? Can you dream the dreams? Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Come and worship our God who sends the Spirit to touch us and transform us into joyful, hopeful, Pentecost people. Let's put that joy into our singing. There's a world that leads to happiness. There's a bridge that spans the emptiness between God and man. There's a light that is the light of man. There's a truth that brings us back again. Back home again. You are the way, the truth, and the light. Trusting completely in the Spirit's power to forgive, we now come to confess our sin. Lord of patience and persistence, we live in a broken and shattered world. All around us, we see evidence of hatred and alienation. 
We cannot miss the alienation of your people from each other. We create devices that separate rather than unite, systems that divide rather than bring together in hope. For all the ways our sin causes division and hurt, forgive us. Remind us that the disciples, too, lived in a fearful world, and that one day you came to them as they sat huddled in fear, and you empowered them. You gave them hearts of courage and faith. Give to us the same hearts that we may serve you well, bringing peace and hope to our world. In the name of Christ, we offer this prayer. Dear ones, fear no more. The power of the Holy Spirit has set you free from the prison of doubt and fear. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Now is the time to shine with the light of God's love. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Let's pray, shall we? From the time you fashioned the heavens and the earth from a formless void, O oh God, your creative energy has done marvelous works all around us. May your creative spirit be at work in our hearts and in our minds today as we worship you and always as we strive to live in obedience to your will. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Everyone may be seated except the kids. I want the kids to come forward for kid talk. <clears throat> come on down. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. I want to tell you a story this morning, you guys. First of all, how's it going? Good. Doing all right? This whole summer thing has started now. Feeling pretty good about summer so far? Good deal. I want to tell you a story about a group of blind people. What does it mean if people are blind? Yes, they can't see. So this group of blind people had never, ever been told or experienced what an elephant is. Do you know what an elephant is? Yeah. Right? Kind of a big animal. One day, they had the opportunity because an elephant came to their town. So they all, as a group, went to see. Nope, they couldn't see. They went to find out what an elephant was. And how do blind people learn what things are? One of the ways is by touching them. So one of their group touched the elephant on the trunk. 
and reported to the rest of the group, well, an elephant seems to be this great, big, huge, thick snake. That seemed odd to those who could see the elephant, right? So then another person touched the elephant's ear. You know, those great big ears that flap in the wind, right? And he reported, the elephant appears to be like a fan that creates a breeze when you move it back and forth. Ah. The third person in their group grabbed a hold of the elephant's leg, kind of felt around it and said, no, the elephant's like a great big tree. I'm holding the trunk right now as I speak. The fourth person touched the elephant's side and, and figured that the elephant must be like this wall. And then the fifth person, he was at the back end of the elephant. What did he grab? The tail, right? What do you think he said? The elephant seems to be like a rope. And then the sixth person, he was at the other end, and he was feeling not the trunk, but those white things on the side of the trunk. What are those called? The tusks, right. He said, ah, the elephant, that, that appears to be something hard and smooth, much like what I envision a spear to be like. Now, which one of those six was correct? Which one was right? Yes. The sixth? Did they describe an elephant? Well, all of them were right with what they were feeling, right? From what they could tell, this is what the elephant felt like. So all of them were right, but none of them were really right about describing the whole elephant. And you know what? That's kind of the way it is with God. God is bigger than an elephant. God is bigger than a great big whale. God is bigger than a country. God is bigger than a, a world. God is bigger than the universe. God is so big, we could never, ever understand everything there is to understand about God. But you know what? Every now and then, we catch a little glimpse of what God is like. I mean, we take a look around the world, and what do we see? We see everything that God has made. Take a look at the people next to you. There's somebody God made, right? And so we understand God to be the creator of everything that exists and one who calls us to take care of what God has created. Secondly, when we read our Bible, we read stories about a guy named Jesus who was God coming down to this earth to be with us, walking around like a human being, so that everyone would know that God's love is for everybody and that God wants us to share that love with other people. So two ways that we understand God. The third way rests on a promise that Jesus gave us. Jesus said, I'm going to send you a helper. Even when I'm gone, God will still be with you through the Holy Spirit. Have you ever seen the Holy Spirit? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah? Let me know what he looks like, all right? What do you know? Let me know what she looks like. Let me know what it looks like. I mean, the Holy Spirit is one of those things that we can't really see, but sometimes we feel like the Holy Spirit is with us when we sing one of our favorite songs in worship or when we know we've done something wrong and our moms and dads give us a hug anyway and say, I love you no matter what. So there are ways that we can understand some of God, but we'll never understand the great mysteries that God is because God is so big. Well, I think that deserves a prayer. Would you pray an echo prayer with me? Just repeat after me. Dear God, Great big God, thank you for being awesome. Thank you for creating everything. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Be with us and bless us always.
and help us to be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. You can head back to your seats. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Genesis. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man 
In his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female he created them, and God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. God's voice in the Bible and in preaching and music and prayer. Listen for God's voice in this reading, found in the Psalms. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, I, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them, yet you have made them little less than divine, with glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands, you have put all things under their feet, and all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I want you to take a moment and think about what you think about God. You can write it down or you can just close your eyes and think about it. I want you to think about what you picture in your head when I ask these questions. So, how do you picture God? What does God look like? What does God not look like? Does God have shape or color in your mind? Gender? Does God move? Where is God? Who is God with or is God alone? You have that picture in your head? Now what if I asked you to do the same with the Trinity? What do you picture in your head when you think about the Trinity? Got that in your mind now? I'm going to suspect that many of you, when you pictured God, you pictured God the Father or God the Creator. Yeah? That's fine. And I'm also going to guess that it's probably harder to imagine what the Trinity would look like. And that's fine too. You are not wrong to picture God in this way. It's what the church has trained you to do. And like Pastor Tim mentioned last week, we don't think about the Holy Spirit very often, and so we're not very comfortable with that idea. I think we also keep the whole concept of the Trinity at arm's length because we don't want to get it wrong and it's too hard to imagine. 
So I want to state it plainly here that God is the Trinity, that the members of the Trinity are God, and that whatever we imagine when we think about God and the Trinity in our head, they are the same thing. There is no difference. I promise I'm not going to stand here and try to explain the mystery of the Trinity today. You're welcome. <laughs> but insofar as it is Trinity Sunday, and the Trinity is, some, is a gift from God, I figure we might as well dig in a little bit, right? Here's what I want to emphasize about God today. God is active. God is moving. God is creating. God loves. God gives. God receives. God is a subject of all kinds of verbs. God is here, and God is alive. And the best and oldest and most faithful image of this living God is the Trinity. And for all that is mysterious and unknowable about our Trinitarian God, the church fathers and mothers, starting back in the 300s, have wondered if the Trinity is not so much a statue that we could stand in a museum and look at, but more like a dance. And as a dancer myself, I'll admit that I love this image of the Trinity the best. The official word for it is perichoresis, this dance of the trinity. It's kind of like a folk dance or a ballet or a contra dance where the dancers know all of the steps and all of the ways that they can fit together. So the members of the trinity as dancers are moving together, weaving in and out of each other. And the choreography is perfect that one member always fills the space of the other. It is always changing, an endless variety, and always being made new, but always beautiful. And these Trinitarian dancers, they are generous and giving and never jealous. No one is trying to stand out or steal the show. And their dance is beautiful, not because there is one leader who is showing everyone the moves, but because they are creating it together. This image helps us understand what it means to be made in the image of our living God. If God is moving and acting and giving and creating and receiving, and if our God is always in relationship, then that is who we are made to be too. This means that God has made us to create and give and receive and live in community. This is in our DNA as Christians and our very identity and so to destroy or hoard or cut ourselves off from our neighbors is sinful, and it's just not what we have been made for. We can't ignore how clearly, how clearly in the creation story, God lays out for us God's special plans as stewards of God's creation. It starts in verse 26 from the message. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. God created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. God created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in, in the sea and birds in the air and for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. We've been given no small task here, whether you call it dominion or stewardship or responsibility. God has made us uniquely to be part of what God is doing in the world. And this is a privilege, but it does come with responsibility. We have certainly lived into our role to take control of the 4.5 billion year old earth in our 200,000 years of existence as a species. I doubt there's a place on earth that humans have not affected in some way. We have done both great good and yet terrible damage to our earth. We have used our complex minds capable of learning and innovation to make the land inhabitable for people even very harsh land. And humans have made great discoveries about how to heal and treat and accommodate people of all abilities. And this is an amazing thing. 
However, we have also done terrible damage to our earth, and that is a simple fact. We have depleted non-renewable natural resources, we have polluted our air and our water, and we have caused the extinction of God's creatures. We are called by God to take care of all that God has shared with us. What we have is ours only temporarily. This changes everything. Let's look at what stewardship means. Our money is not really ours. It is merely a tool to take care of the things that God has given us. It is used to provide for our basic survival needs for us and for the people who rely on us in our household. But not only that, but our neighbors in need as well, and for all of God's creatures who are in danger. This is what we acknowledge every time we put our money or our envelope in the plate, every time we see that email notification of our automatic withdrawal. It's what we acknowledge every time that we give to an organization that is doing good work. These are all examples of good stewardship of money. And not only our money, but also our time. Our time is not even really ours. Every moment is a gift that we cannot take for granted. We are called to be stewards of our time. We're called to take our time and use it to serve God and our neighbors and all of God's creation. And I get to see many of you give generously of your time during the week here. Some of you make quilts to bring warmth to cold and lonely places. This week, I got to see some of you welcome children into our building on Tuesday through Friday. And we welcomed 760 kids to come and eat lunch here in this past week. We don't know where they would have gotten that meal otherwise. Many of you step up by, sorry, it's 560 kids. I did this last week, I'm bad at math. <laughs> 560 kids, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> for lunch in this past week. And many of you step up by showing up to visit and share a meal with kids who are sick or going through difficult times, just to name a few. And beyond these four walls, you are serving in your children's schools, you are caregiving for aging parents and you are raising children. You are volunteering to serve at the banquet and Food to You Mobile Food Pantry and the community outreach and more. And all of these are good examples of your time. And not, our, not the creation, not our money, not our time, and not even our voices are ours. Our ability to speak or write or type to advocate on behalf of the causes of people who cannot speak for themselves or whose voices are not being heard by those who have power over them, this is another gift that we must steward. When you speak up for someone, for something that isn't right in your workplace, or when you stick up for someone who is being bullied, or when you notice someone is down and you take the time to share a loving word that they need to hear, all of these are examples of good stewardship. A member of our congregation, Steve Matzner, who's also a professor at Augie, he has named his faith as the reason he feels compelled to advocate for policies that um, promote responsible care for God's creation. And this is another example of what good stewardship looks like. People of God, I know that many of you are doing these things all of the time and often quietly and discreetly. And I'm here to say that these things matter and that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This calling to care for the gifts that God has given us, God's creation, our money, time, our voices, we are not alone in this. For God and God's great mercy has promised to never leave us or abandon us and when we are getting to stick with us, when we are getting it right, and God promises to never leave us, even in spite of our sin and our failure. God promises to be with us always, even to the end of the age. And God is surely with us in this world. God is active, God is moving, God is creating. God gives, God receives. God is here, and God is alive. Let us join God in the dance. Amen.
Now it's our turn to respond to this word that we've heard today. So I invite you to stand as you are able. We proclaim our faith today in the three-in-one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together in the Spirit's embrace, we now pray for the church, for the world, and all of God's people. Holy Trinity, you call us to be your church. Keep calling your people to faithful service. Give us vision and courage to share the good news of Jesus Christ with all the world. Bless all who will, will participate in Vacation Bible School here this week. <clears throat> and we pray for our call committee and those who are being interviewed to serve as our next pastor of outreach and communication. Bless all with your discerning love and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Joyful Creator, you made a wondrous universe and call us to be partners in its care. Bring rains to parched lands and bless farmers and newly planted crops. Inspire all of us to be good stewards. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, you love our enemies and bless all people. Make our hearts yearn to be joyful and share your generosity. Help leaders and citizens use political power in service of your peace. Grant safety and healing in troubled lands. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Compassionate healer, you bring about the fullness of life. When sorrow wounds faith, send wise ones to comfort and, and encourage those who suffer. Heal your people in body, mind, and spirit, especially Seth Sims, John Jones, Tricia Albertson, Harold Krieger, Ron Grimes, John Breezy, Aubrey Liberis, Gretchen Irwin, and those we name in our hearts before you. 
Lord, in your mercy. Holy Trinity, you call us together to bless your world. We give you thanks for new life given to Christopher Robert and Emma Caroline King through the waters of baptism this weekend. We pray also for your blessings upon Elizabeth, Elizabeth Vinrick and Samuel Gotham married here on Saturday. And we pray, Lord, for Deresa Caboto, our OSL custodian, as he receives his U.S. citizenship this week, and for his wife, Dantu, as they anticipate with joy the birth of their next child in October. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with each other. Having shared the peace of the Lord generously with one another, we now share generously from what God has given us for supporting the ministry of this congregation with our offering. And kids, I want you to help me lead the noisy offering. Come on and get your buckets.
That might be just the most thorough group of offering collectors I've ever had. <laughs> Let's give them a hand, shall we? I invite you to stand. Today has been a day when we have sung of God's majesty and awe because God comes down to us and is for us in Jesus Christ. And so we remember that it was on the night when our Lord Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. He gave thanks for it and then broke it and gave it to his disciples, his closest of friends, and said, take this, eat it, this is my body given for you. Do this so that you will remember me. Then Jesus took the cup. And raising it high, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and then he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, this cup, it's the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this so that you will remember me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord's invitation is for you. Come to this banquet, for everything is now ready. You may be seated.
And now, may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen every one of you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We, uh, we need to send some mission trip travelers on their way, so I invite those of you who are here to come and gather in the center aisle. Do we have any? Elise? Sammy? Uh, you can pick them out with their blue t-shirts. Come and please stand in the center aisle. Make yourselves obvious, all right? Come in a single line facing me. And let me tell you, you've got a response. I've got a couple of questions to ask you, and your response is, I will, with God's help. Did you hear that? All right, here we go. First, a reading from Romans. Just as each of our bodies has several parts, and each part has a separate function, so all of us, in union with Christ, form one body. And as parts of it, we belong to each other. Our gifts differ according to the grace given us. If your gift is prophecy, then use it as your faith suggests. If administration, then use it for administration. If teaching, then use it for teaching. Let the preachers deliver sermons, the almsgivers give freely, the officials be diligent, and those who do works of mercy do them cheerfully. So, I have a couple of questions. Like I said, will you accept this commission to use your God-given gifts in accordance with the Holy Scriptures? If so, answer, I will with God's help. On this mission trip to Kenosha and in all of your life, will you conduct yourselves as examples and servants of Jesus Christ? I will. God's help. And will you be faithful, understanding, and loving to the people whom you li will live and work? I will. With God's help. Well, all right then. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. And all the God's people said, Amen. Would God's people please stand? And we're going to pray a prayer of blessing. So I want all of us to join hands in prayer and span the center aisle so that we link up with these mission trip travelers. Excellent. You follow directions very well, everyone. Let's Oh, we still got people on the move. Here we go. Let's pray. Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.